Okay, here we are. We are back. It is 2024. Incredible. And I'm joined with Amy Mackey and John Fitzgerald of the Plant Strong team. You guys, it's great to see you. Happy New Year. Happy, happy Friday. Ha was, happy both, right? <laughs> happy New Year and happy Friday. Uh, you guys got anything exciting going on in the new year? Hmm. <laughs> the plant strong challenge the seven day challenge is going on it is so super exciting we have so many new faces in the facebook group it's really my favorite time of year actually well amy from what i heard you're really the one that pushed for this seven day uh <laughs> seven day plant strong challenge to happen in the uh in the new year and you know what i'm glad we're doing it we've got over what six thousand five hundred people that signed up for it Wow. So we have a lot of people uh, that are really engaged in our in our community. Can you like speak a little bit to what the engagement's been like? Um, we had over 258 posts on Wednesday. We didn't get the stats yet for yesterday. 258 posts from the community and and the team sharing meals and and just all kinds of inspiration and tips and things. And then yesterday there were a hundred, I'm sorry, 1,138 comments posted in the group. So let me tell you, it has been a veritable festival of plant strong goodness in there. So many people sharing their meals, um, asking questions, learning tips. What do I do with my kids? What do I do with my husband who doesn't want to eat this way? People sharing their success stories. And yesterday we were in the news an awful lot. Well, <laughs> we were, weren't we? So, <laughs> so how exactly were we, were we in the news? So it turns out that U.S. News and World Report ranked us number uh, diet number 15 on the giant list of all the diets out there. And um, they pointed to uh, all, all, all of our assets, the things that we have for people, the meal planner, um, mm -hmm. the Plant Strong food line, the Plant Strong coaching. And then CNN picked up the article and was actually talking about how plant-based diets are actually really hot this year. We've, we're kind of ahead of the game, right? We've been at this for a minute. Yeah, we've been ahead of the game for about 14 years, but yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, but it was really nice to see our name show up on CNN yesterday. That was just really super cool. And so that was on. And then Women's World Magazine ran an article yesterday that has two of our plant strong rock stars um, that have lost amazing amounts of weight. We posted that article in the Facebook group yesterday. And if you joined the challenge, that uh, link to that article or I, I think it's in the email that went out today. So yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. have a copy of it. Yeah, yeah. Lori, who's on our team, um, sent out an email for day three. And you're right. There was a link to the article in Women's World. John, I got to ask you. So we were number 15, according to US News and World Report. Why were we not number one? You talk Ooh. to me. Talk you to know, me. That's a great question. And I got to tell you, what, it, like you said, we've been years and years ahead of this trend. What it goes to show you is those things where the rock the rock band becomes that overnight success, right? No one's ever heard of these guys. Now they're number one on all the charts. That's what we are. We're, we just have some people to convince, right? That's the way I look at it. And just to go back to the Facebook group for a second. Yeah. Looking at all, I've been doing this for going on 10 years now, eating this way. And seeing the food pictures has given me so many ideas of new foods to try, new combinations to try. I can't. I can't tell you how many screenshots I've taken over <laughs> the last two days. Can you can you give me an example of a photo that you saw that inspires you to do something? Oh my God, I can't remember who posted it, so I apologize. But Amy, did you see the post this morning? This woman has this bed, what looks like arugula, and it's just this plate of colorful fruits and vegetables. It is the most gorgeous picture I've ever seen. I initially thought it was one of Amy's photos. I'm like, no, Amy didn't post this. Somebody else, but 
but it was just like a, the whole combination of blueberries that looked like mangoes and strawberries. And then there were, oh, it was just, it looked like, um, you know, edamame, mm. maybe mm. some, it was yes. just, it was the most beautiful, inclusive picture of so many different combinations. I was like, I got to try, I got to try and recreate this. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're, you're right. So we had the U.S. News and World Report. We've got CNN. We've got Women's World. And then neither of us have seen it because we haven't had time. But there's also a documentary that's out right now on Netflix. And it's this twin study, right? Mm -hmm. And it ac absolutely, 100%, uh, demonstrably points to the benefits of a you know, whole food plant-based diet. I can't speak much more than that. I know that Louis Sahoyas, who also did the Game Changers, is the director of the film. And it contains, or I should say it stars many of our Brock stars that we love, the Shur's Eyes, Michael Greger. Uh, who else? Do you guys know? Um, I don't, but it's it, the big deal about it. And if you if you haven't seen or don't really know sort of the backstory behind it is that doing studies with identical twins rules out the, you know, if, if you, if you're doing something and your neighbor's doing something and you have different results, people can say, well, you know, genetic differences and all of those different things. So they love to do studies with identical twins because that actually sort of rules out the, um, the anomalies show, right. The differences between you and me, but if you do it with identical twins, the results are really kind of lock solid. Yeah. Well, and of course, I mean, and maybe you said this, but they've got the same DNA, right? right. <laughs> so, so everything kind of lines up like that. Um, and Carrie, Carrie, who's our producer in the background, will you throw up on the screen? What is the name of this document? There you are. You are what you eat. Let's yeah. put that up there. Yeah, there were people uh, talking about it in the, in the Facebook group today on how it's amazing and you got to watch it and everything else. So I, I think it's going to get a lot of run. Yeah. But you know, it's funny. They're calling it, you are what you eat. But you know, at all of our immersions, Dr. Clapper gets up there on day one and he says, you aren't what you eat. You're what you absorb. <laughs> <laughs> but, but obviously you have to be eating the right foods to be absorbing the right foods. But yeah. you know what? We're, we're just bantering over, you know, words here. <laughs> so, so John and Amy, you guys are our rock star plan strong coaches. You've been coaching for well over, help me out. Is it four years now? Five. Five, Five years. years. Where's the time gone? <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I, and why I wanted you guys to join me today on this Facebook Live is as we're entering into a new year, and there's so many resolutions that are flying around out there and mindsets. And we know, I think we all know how important mindset is to ach achieving success in, in, in life. So for those people that are just embarking on this journey or they're trying to, you know, um, re, re kind of ignite their plan strong lifestyle, what are some mental like strategies that you guys would recommend? Why don't we start there? You know, Rip, let, wait, I'm going to go a step backwards, right? Please, please. I saw a great, and, and I've shared this in the coaching program, a great definition of what mindset is. So mindset, uh, this is by Jim Quick, who wrote the book Limitless. If you haven't read it, it's an incredible book. But he says the definition of mindset is the deeply held beliefs, attitudes, and assumptions we create about who we are, how the world works, and what we are capable of, what we deserve, and what is possible. Now, can and I repeat that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that from memory. But yeah. you know, the, the two words that I love that speak so much about what mindset is and why it's so important, we create, right? So much of our mindset is what we believe, what we think we believe, and what we allow ourselves to believe versus what may or not may or may not be true. Mm -hmm. So mindset is so much about believing in yourself, believing in what you're doing, and just knowing that you're doing the right thing and sticking to it. Right. And so for everybody that's out there, I want you to know that not only do I believe in my 
bones, but I know that what you are doing right now is the best thing that any of you can do for your health. Is that a pretty good, powerful, like statement? That, that, Absolutely. That, that what we you believe has more control over what you're doing than anything else that you will do when you're making a change like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. Amy, what do you think? I saw a post in the Facebook group yesterday um, that said, you know, I'm a pretty good cook, um, but I'm kind of at a loss. I, um, I, I, the restrictions on this diet are throwing me for a loop. Mm. And so I would love to flip that script. And, and basically you can look at removing meat, dairy, oil, and sugar right? Four, four little things. You, you can remove those things from your diet and think of that as restrictive. Or you can think of the incredibly huge world of plants that most of us, when we eat the standard American diet, don't ever delve into, right? We, there's, there's only a handful of vegetables and fruits that we generally eat on a standard American diet. I love to think of this as so expansive that the possibilities are just endless. And so you can think of, you can think of this as restrictive, or you can think of this as an adventure. And that's a mindset, right? If, you, if you're if you gonna slog into this thing, I can't have this and I can't do that and I can't cook with this and what am I gonna do without oil? Or you can say, wow, look at the amazing array of plants and flavors and all of these different things that I can really incorporate into my day. And boy, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna learn some things here, right? You know, you know what, I, I love that you brought that up. Restrict restrictive versus expansive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think I've written in three or four of my books. People all, a lot of times are like, oh my gosh, what in the world am I going to eat? And then you, you, you ask them like, okay, so how many breakfasts would you say you rotate around right now? And typically the answer is, well, one or two, if I have breakfast, right? right. And then, well, what about lunches? Well, it's probably, yeah, probably two or three different lunches. And then, you know, you guys have, Amy and John, you've heard this, but most American families rotate around six to seven different dinners throughout the course of their lifetime. Right. So it is so, the, the, the way people currently eat the standard American diet is really actually, um, it's, a, it's, it's, <laughs> it's restrictive and it's so unimaginative, yes. right? Yeah. And, and so, and so when you look at, like the foods that are actually on the planet. I've heard a quote, 1% of the food on the planet comes from basically meat and dairy. And 99% comes from fruits and vegetables, whole, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. So it really is. It's such a mindset, Amy. So I'm really, I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's really hundreds and hundreds of fruits and vegetables and grains and types of potatoes. Um, at the farmer's market here in Portland, we went over the summer and there were literally like 17 different varieties of potatoes, some of which I'd never seen before. You know, we know there's sweet potatoes, there's russet potatoes, yellow potatoes, red potatoes, but then you get into the colors of sweet potatoes. And these were even more heirloom potatoes of different varieties I'd never seen before. There's hundreds of kinds of apples. Mm. There's, um, I went to a plant sale once when I had my front yard vegetable garden, there were 27 kinds of oregano, 27. Oh, what? Types of oregano, really? Greek oregano, Mexican oregano, Italian oregano, and so on and so forth. The same thing goes for basil and all the different lettuces. There's so many different things out there to try and and experiment with and taste and enjoy. It's really um, it's really a fun adventure if you think of it that way. Well, you you talked about potatoes. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, there's over 200 different types of potatoes that are out there. Have you ever had a fingerling potato? I mm -hmm. have. Okay. You know, Rip, I, I just, when I hear this kind of discussion, it, to me, it still goes back to mindset, right? If you have a restrictive mindset, if you have what we call a fixed mindset, you are looking for ways to not make this change, to not do the right thing, to not eat healthy. So what do you, what's the first thing you could say? Oh, I don't like this type of food, or uh, it doesn't have many choices that I like. And so again, it's all about mindset. You know, we, we, I saw a study from, I think it was the late 2000s, where yeah. they, had a, they had cardiologists tell their patients that 
unless you change your lifestyle, meaning diet, exercise, blah, 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 you, you literally are going to have a cardiac event, right? And do you know that in this study, one out of seven people that were told that changed their diet, changed their lifestyle. So literally in a life and death situation, only 15% said, yep, yeah, I can change what I can eat. So again, it's mindset. Those other 85% said, no, I'm good where I'm at, right? I'll take my chances or I'll go on the medications or whatever it is. So yeah, it, it's, it's mindset's critical. You know, it's, it's so many times when I'm home over the holidays, which, uh, which I just was for Thanksgiving, visiting with Ann and Essie. And, you know, they've been counseling people since 1984 on how to prevent and reverse heart disease. And these are really, you know, life and death situations with these people. And Ann will just always say, this is all about attitude. Are you going in with the right attitude or not? And that will really determine your success or your failure with this. And people that are like, oh my God, this is so hard and there's nothing to eat. And everybody thinks that I'm weird as opposed to this is an adventure. I cannot wait to turn my health around. I am going to be so vibrant and full of energy. And I'll be, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, you know, we talk in, in the coaching program about the fixed end of the spectrum and the growth end of the, the mindset spectrum. You just perfectly described the growth end of the mindset spectrum, right? Being open to a challenge, accepting the fact that, hey, I'm going to have missteps. I'm going to have hurdles. I'm going to have struggles. It doesn't matter. I know what I want. I know what I'm doing is the right thing. I just have to do what I have to do to get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, Amy, we, we, we had some people in that Woman's World article that were mentioned. Yeah. Can you talk about uh, any of the success that uh, either Trish or the other woman had? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Trisha um, has been uh, has been to our retreat. Um, she was in the coaching program. She ha is a a longtime member of our Facebook group. Um, you know, when you decide that you want to do this she just she just grabbed onto this and ran with it she's had so much success she's really had a wonderful experience and has really really changed her life and the way that she maneuvers in this world she has a beagle dog rescue that keeps her super active and busy and you know she's always dropping tips and ideas into the facebook group um, of the things like this is my meal today or this is this is what i did and this is how i did this we have so many examples of that and we actually we're seeing even more examples there are more success stories rolling in we have people who did the challenge in 2017 and 2018 and are popping in to say, hey, you guys can do this. Oh. I just love that about our, our plant strong people are the kindest, most giving, most helpful helpers you will ever find in this world out here in the group this week, inspiring other people to just keep going. You got this, you can do it. And it's just, it's almost like a family reunion, seeing everybody in the Facebook group. I'm so glad we decided to do this this year. Yeah. Yeah. And Trisha, Trisha, what, what, she's down like what, 70 pounds from where she started. And I believe so. Yeah. yeah and, and then she's also a, um, John, isn't she a voice coach? Yeah. She's a professional voice coach. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. I remember uh, she, so everybody that's listening at the last night of our retreats, our six day retreats, we have a talent show where we invite people to come up and share some sort of a talent that they have. And she did something with, if I'm not, if I'm not, um, mistaken with her voice and yes, I mean, that yeah, was it. amazing. Yeah. You know, it's like one of those things. It's like when you're spend the whole week with somebody, right. You're seeing him at dinner, you're seeing, him, you have no idea anything like that about them. Right. So then yeah. she gets up there that last night and just belts out this song. And I think I know I was, and I'm sure the rest of the crowd was like, Oh my God. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's just, it, it was just great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and to that, to that point, like I can remember one lunch I was sitting with a woman and we, I asked her, you know, what she did. And she told me that she was all into feng shui and she was a feng shui instructor. And I actually had her on Facebook live because I found it to be so fascinating, but she gave a whole 10 minute presentation for her talent show on feng shui. That was right? great. I do remember that. Yeah. 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 Now, Amy and John, 
since you guys are kind of our mental mastery coaches here, and you've been doing this for so long, I know that this has arisen. What do you tell people when they're going down this path? They are so excited and jazzed, and yet they have a bump on the log for you know uh, that they're living with that wants nothing to do with this. They're not supportive, and if anything, they're trying to sabotage this person's success. What 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 are what do you recommend here? Yeah, you know what, Rip, you'd be surprised. Well, you know, but I think most people would be surprised how often that happens, right? It's usually one person and maybe they try and drag the other one along with them kicking and screaming, right? How many times have we done that opening introductions at the retreats and the husband stands up? It's usually the husband, but it's usually the husband and, you know, What's your name? Where are you here? And they're like, she dragged me here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's the best thing you can do is try and find a, a supportive group like we have with the Facebook group that can help you during this time and just kind of tell that other person, hey, listen, you know what? I'm doing this for me. Just let me do what I need to do. I feel better for what I'm doing. If you want to join along, fine. If not, you know, I'll talk to you when, when I get there and you, maybe you'll see how delicious this food is. Yeah. Yeah. You can't change somebody's mind. You can't convince somebody to do this. I mean, you might convince them to do it for a week, but to do this for the long haul, you have to choose this for yourself. You have to choose you. You know, you have to, you have to really, really want to do this if you want to, to get all of the benefits out of being plant strong. And ultimately, you can try badgering, you can try lectures, you can try dropping links in here or there, but I really believe you have to be open to this. When you're ready, when you're ready to choose this lifestyle, it's so easy. The second you choose, it's so easy once you decide, because what we sort of determined, the amount of decisions that we make over the course of the day are so incredibly vast. But when you truly decide to do something, there really isn't anything that, that will stop you. The mind is an amazing thing. And the only thing that really is the hurdle is you. It, it's not the food. It's not the convenience. It's not, um, you know, what will somebody say when I go out to dinner? It is here. It's it's here. It's here. It's it's if you want to do this, you're going to find a way to make it work. Amy, I can't even tell you much. I love my takeaway from what you just said there and everything was great was choose you. Yeah. Like, choose you and choose you now don't 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 wait another month another two months another year what would you say are the biggest slip ups for people they they've they've chosen themselves they've chosen you right or me or however you want to phrase that and yet there's still some slip ups because nobody's perfect right mm -hmm. and, and we we were living in a world where you know there everywhere we turn it is stuff that is not good for us. It's in our face. So where, what have you guys seen in your coaching? People make it way too hard. Don't make it hard. Keep it super simple. If you're setting out for your week of uh, the Plant Strong Challenge with 24 recipes that you want to make, good gravy. You're going to be in the kitchen the entire time, right? <laughs> That's Plant Strong gravy, but good gravy. You're going to like really... Pick four recipes and make double batches. Eat the same thing for breakfast, the same for, thing for lunch. Um, you, it doesn't have to be hard. Somebody said to me the other day that I'm intimidated by bowl building because of all of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Well, it can be a green, a bean, and a grain. Boom, right? Put some salsa on top. You're done. It doesn't have to be 16 ingredients. Don't overcomplicate it. I think that's the first thing that I would tell people. Yeah. And, and the second thing is that don't think about the rest of your life. Mm. Just think mm. about the next seven days. Mm. You know, Rip, and not to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to go back to mindset because, listen, we are human beings, right? And we don't like change. We like everything to be as it's always been and how it's always going to be. We just think, and we have to, we have to embrace the fact that change can be scary. Change mm. can be hard. Right. I, I, Amy, Amy, you can block out now because I know you've heard this story a hundred times, but I always talk about the, the little show that my kids used to watch, the magic school bus. And it was this, this cartoon about learning stuff about gravity and all this other stuff. And they made it fun. And the teacher was Miss Frizzle. And Miss Frizzle would always say when she wanted the kids to try something new, she said, get messy, make mistakes. Mm. Right. Because that's what change is. It's, 
It's putting yourself out there, being open to the change and being okay with making a mistake, right? Being okay that like, hey, maybe it didn't work out. And as Adam Sud says, right? Get comfortable, be uncomfortable. And yeah. we don't like to be uncomfortable. That's that's why change is so hard. That's so good. And you know what I love? I think if we could embrace the mindset of change equals opportunity. Yes, right? love that. As yep. opposed to change equals, I'm going to screw up. I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, yikes. Uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Forget about that. Right. right. But change equals opportunity. Love what you just said there, John, a lot. Um, so this, I, I put this up there, but you know, Clint says that he's the, he, I am the husband, but I'm the one pushing for plants because I satted, right. Standard American dieted my way into a whole grip of chronic diseases. Yeah. Well, and isn't that true, Rip? I mean, you've been doing this longer than any of us. How many times have has it been where someone doesn't look to make a change until they've had an episode like that, right? Until they've had the heart attack or the stroke or have diabetes. And wouldn't it be great if you can do that, you know, make this change, consider making this change before you get to an event like that. And I think that's the hardest thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's a shame that so many of us have this, um, we're reactive as opposed to being pre, uh, proactive, right? And right. let's proactively take the appropriate steps so that we don't ever have to go down that path. And like, look at this comment right here that Janelle just said, this challenge is our life, is our life. Three years and absolutely not challenging now. We are so much better. Thank you. Right? Yeah, and see, what I love about that is Janelle, and it, she says our life, but Janelle took a chance, right? She took that opportunity to, to change and probably was scared. I bet she was scared when she first made it, but look how it's worked out for her. I know. I yeah. know. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at some of the comments here, guys. Uh, here's strong and free. Hey, we like that. <laughs> My goal is to be 100% plant-based this year. This is so good. Change equals opportunity. Yeah, strong and free. Well, and it's also an opportunity to give your brain to learn something new. And as we age, learning new things is one of the things that keeps our brain so vibrant. It's one of those things that, you know, I love watching your mom. When, when, when she's listening to somebody talk, she's taking notes, when she's doing anything, um, she's continuing to learn even still. You can never have enough information. You can never have too much knowledge. You can never learn too many new things, right? It, there's always an opportunity to learn more. Uh, every time I see your dad at a retreat or anywhere else when he's not speaking, he has his nose in a book, right? He, he is always continuing to learn. He's reading new studies. If you haven't done this before, this is an opportunity for you to learn some new skills in the kitchen, learn all kinds of new plants, learn all kinds of new mindset tricks, especially, you know, if you're in the coaching program, that's one of the things that we really work on is giving you tips and tools that you can use in your life, whether it comes to plant-based eating or mindfulness or sleep habits or fitness or your, your self-care and wellness. Every time you learn something new, you are really just giving your brain a hug. It is really, truly an opportunity to just stay fresh and vibrant. And you're going to make whole bunch of friends, whether it's the guy in the produce department or it's somebody on a recipe blog, somebody in our Facebook group, you never know where your new next friend might come from. And it's just really a, a great community to be part of because it's like-minded people who really want to get the most out of their lives. Yes. And what would you say about people that they go down this path and they unfortunately lose friends? Because ah, that, that, that happens, right? Yeah. I mean, John, when was the last time you were asked out for dinner? <laughs> well, that has nothing to do with what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're so right, Rip. And I think a lot of times that's part of the fear, right? That's part of the scary part of making this change is, oh my gosh, I don't know anyone else that eats this way. What am I going to do? Well, yeah. guess what? There's a whole Facebook group. There's local groups that get together, right? And, and meet and have potlucks that eat this way. Yeah. It's just kind of looking at the world differently and finding opportunities. You know, uh, Dr. Gemma Newman, who's this brilliant family uh, plant-based doc, 
out of the UK. I had her on the podcast recently and this is for the second time, but the first time when I asked her, so, you know, how was it going plant-based? And she's like, Oh my God, my husband's the one that totally wanted to do it. And I wanted nothing to do with it because she was like, I don't, I just didn't know what the neighbors would think. Right. <laughs> so she was so afraid that, that, uh, you know, her neighbors would look at her like she's got three eyes or something weird like that. And, and now she's so on board. It's wonderful. Yeah. I just had a comment up there that I wanted to read and somebody took it down. That was probably Carrie. Um, oh, yeah. Let's read this. Margaret, I thought changing to whole food plant based was so exciting and fun just when I hit middle age and life was boring and I wasn't feeling well. Now I feel great and I'm so excited about life. Isn't you know, that awesome? I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. wow. I mean, that's how I feel now about pickleball. I just like, it's, it's invigorated me beyond like anything I ever, ever anticipated. Really? It all comes back to pickleball, doesn't it? I mean, come on. <laughs> life is pickleball. Pickleball well, is and, life. And so, that's a great segue there. What if your friends do say, oh, you're doing that plant-based thing. How are we going to do Friday night dinners? And I don't want to, I'm not, I'm just not going to call Debbie anymore because they're doing that veggie thing. And I don't really want to have anything to do with that. Two things. One, you need to know that it doesn't really have anything to do with you. It really has to do with the fears of change that they don't want to make um, because you're a reflection of what they're not doing. So it really doesn't have anything to do with you. It's more internal towards their own selves. Mm -hmm. But it's a great opportunity to say, you know what, we've been doing Friday night dinners for so long. Let's change it up. How about we learn how to play pickleball? How about we go on a hike together on Saturday? How about we, you know, we do pick your activity. You could do anything else. Maybe you do a museum tour or maybe you do, you know, uh, some sort of travel adventure together. You, it's fun to change things up sometimes. And sometimes that can really sort of renew friendships as well. So don't let that get in the way of things. And if you need any tips or tricks on, on how to sort of navigate that, hit us up, send us an email or hit us up in the Facebook group because so many of us have really dealt with that. Well, let me, let me ask you this, uh, Amy and John, for people that are tuning in right now or will be tuning in for the replay that aren't currently part of the co weekly coaching program, what can you tell me about it? How do you register? How do you how do you become part of it? Yeah, go ahead, Amy. Oh, you, sure. You got it. All those days. <laughs> So basically, our coaching program is a monthly subscription, like you have a monthly subscription to your cable company or your cell phone. You can stay as little or as long as you like. If you downloaded the Plant Strong Challenge Guide, there is a promo code in there to get your first month for $7. It's normally $29.99. You're going to visit myplantstrong.com and you're going to select coaching. And then when you're going through the checkout process, you're going to make sure you put that promo code in there, kale 7 and hit apply in order to get that discount. What we do in the coaching program is we have a full series of coursework. So we've got PDFs and worksheets and all kinds of things for you to do activity wise. You're gonna find a whole bunch of lectures. I think there's 10 of them from Rip himself that is going to cover the seven pillars and sort of all of the science on why you want to do this and helpful tips along the way as well. And then in addition to the video lectures, you're gonna find all kinds of bonus materials, charts, graphs, um, recipes, kitchen hacks, all kinds of good stuff on how to travel this way, what to do if you have a whole house full of people. We have a whole bar building guide to do potato bars and pizza bars. So that way everybody gets to select their own toppings and you can please everybody, even in a house divided. And in addition to that, we have coaching calls on Tuesday nights via Zoom at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you can't participate at Tuesday night at 8 p.m. You can watch the recording the next day. Plus, we have a private Facebook group where we do a whole lot of sharing, a whole lot of um, cheerleading and tips and ideas and really helping people get over the hurdles, the things that are in the way of them being their best selves. And so it's a great thing to be part of. We have brand new people in there and we've got seasoned veterans who stick around for the accountability and the inspiration every Tuesday night that have been with us for a few years. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rip, but let Amy, Amy's too modest. The best part is you get more of me and Amy. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, Amy brought it up there at the end. I think the best part of the coaching program is the community, right? This is such an, a supportive community, whether they've been doing it for five years or doing it for six months. When those new people show up, it's so welcoming. And just look at it as additional support as you might be struggling 
making this lifestyle change after the seven day challenge, right? You may feel like, well, great. I had all this support and everyone was doing this together. And now what do I do? Now I feel like I'm on my own again. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be, yeah. right? That's what the coaching program is all about is bringing people together that are on similar paths. That's why it's called the trailblazer program. We're on different paths, but ultimately we're all headed to the same place, a healthier future self, right? That's what we're after. Mm. So Amy and John, thank you for all that. I'm just reading through the comments and, um, true story this is from Meg. An old high school, high school friends did invite me to a holiday dinner because they said I wouldn't be able to eat or drink anything on the preset menu with food and wine pairings. Definitely hurt my feelings. I have a beautiful group who love and accept my way of eating and accommodating. I know that Ann and Essie always say that once you really go down this path, um, you're definitely going to lose some friends and not get invited to invited out to dinner as much. But you really know, you'll find out in a hurry who your true friends are. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think the other thing to keep in mind, and and I love Meg sharing that story, is that sometimes people come around, right? Sometimes, you know, they realize like, listen, we love Meg and and we still want her to come. Let's get past this. Let's, Let's figure out a way that we can all join together, maybe find a restaurant. Most restaurants, right, have at least one vegan option. Or at least the chef is willing to work with you to kind of get you what you need. So I, I, I be honest, when I travel, some of the best meals I have are at steakhouses, right? A baked potato, some steamed veggies. It works, right? It's maybe not what I would choose if I was going out to eat by myself, but it's nice to be around the company. And I think it, you know, I think it's your dad that says, listen, when you go out to eat, you're not really going out for the food, right? right. You're going out to be with people that you like and like you. That's really what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're going for the um, <clears throat> socialization, ideally. Okay. So Jeanette says, it's funny that our neighbors aren't whole food plant-based, but are supported of our decisions and always look forward to, to try and shared, uh, try a shared dish at our get-togethers. My dish is always the first to go. <laughs> Isn't that so perfect? That's awesome. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, well, you know, John and Amy and everybody that's joining here today, um, we got about, I don't know, five, six more minutes, but, uh, if you wouldn't mind, like throw into the chat, like, let us know what are some of your biggest obstacles or hurdles that, you know, we can throw at Amy and John, let's see if we can stump them. Let's see if we can stump the, 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 the mind the mind champs here, the, 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 the pros. So that's my goal right now to stump you guys. All right. You know, Rip, I think the other thing to kind of keep in mind is we're waiting for some of those comments to come in. And, and I think it was the Margaret comment that kind of brought this to mind is, yeah, as, as I said before, change can be scary, but it can also be invigorating, right? Mm. There's so much to love about change, right? I just made a, a big move. I've lived in Cleveland my whole life, right? Um, yeah. <clears throat> X amount of years. And I just moved to Atlanta and, it has been such a joy to learn new things, have to learn how to get different places, right? And yeah, I was scared. I, I mean, literally, I was scared. I'd be like, what am I gonna do down there? I'm not gonna know anybody. I'm not gonna know where I'm going, but you know what? It kind of all worked out and it works out. And I think when you make a lifestyle change like this, mm. yeah, there's, there's a bumpy road at the start, but you know what? You'll end up loving it, trust us. So. I, at this point, are you happy you've moved to uh, Atlanta or do you wish you could go back to Cleveland? It's January in Cleveland. What do you think? Yeah, but the Browns are going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, that's why they make TVs. <laughs> okay. The Browns aren't playing at home anytime soon in the playoffs, so I'm okay. Uh, all right, here we got something. So, N- Natalie, when I go places, even if I bring a dish to share, I'm always tempted by everything else mm. and and I – indulge. So um, what do you think? What's a, what's a way to try and overcome that temptation to indulge? Well, eat before you go, right? So don't go on an empty stomach. Don't go to the party completely famished, right? Knowing that there's going to be food there. Um, Don't do that to yourself. Set yourself up for success. Eat before you go. So that way you have something in your stomach. So that way, when you get there and you see the options, Whatever it is that you bring to share, make sure you have enough for you to have as well. But also 
remember why you're there. You're there for the company that you keep, right? You're there to see Susie and you're there to see Uncle Jeff or whoever might be at the party. You're there to have those conversations and to share, share of yourself and to enjoy seeing them and hearing about, you know, what's going on with them and that kind of thing. It's really not about the food. Try to stay as far away from the food table as you mm -hmm. can. Make sure that you stay hydrated. Um, and that will really help you to, to sort of move past those things. The foods that you see on that table are not your foods. Right. Yeah, I would just add to that, Amy, I thought you were going that way when you said why. But, um, you know, it, it, we talk about it in the coaching program, the importance of finding your why. And it's become kind of cliche. But the why I look at is like that, that last backstop, that last line of defense when you face a situation like Natalie's, right? When you know deep down in your heart why you've made this change, why it's important to you, whatever that is, right? Spending more time with your kids, being around longer with your kids and grandkids, whatever that is, it's important to have that why in place because then if the two tricks that Amy just shared don't work and you're looking at that food that's kind of calling your name out, yeah, you remember that why. And you say, listen, if I eat that food, it's going against everything I believe and why I'm doing and why I made the change that I did. I'm not going to do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I um, I like that. And you guys go deep, deep into helping people discover what their their personal why is. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's that's the nice thing about the coaching program is, yeah, we talk about the seven pillars and we talk about how to eat this way and how to cook this way and all that stuff. But we spend a lot of time on the live calls about mindset, creating habits, setting goals, handling hurdles and struggles and, and lots of other tips. And let me just add something to the, the thing mm. about Natalie, too. The worst thing you can do is if you do give in, if you do indulge, don't beat yourself up. We have this, this, this philosophy, right, as humans, like if I do something that I'm not happy about, I beat myself up, right? I talk, my, I, I yell at myself, why did you eat that cake? Why did you eat that cheese pie? Why did you whatever? And the, that's, that's worse than indulging. Right. Because that leads to more indulging ultimately down the road. So push it, push it back. Forget about it. Get back on your path. Dust yourself off and just say, you know what? I know what I did. And I'm going to come up with a plan for the next time that 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 happens to me. Yeah. Here's. Thank you, John. Here's a comment from Clint. I have a very typical for men obstacle that is not limited to plant based eating social isolation. I don't have a whole lot of friends and none of and none that have any interest in veganism of any kind. And I feel like that would be nice to have. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I, I feel Clint. Uh, I have nobody. Well, other than the plant strong team, I have nobody in my, my outside life of plant strong team that eat this way. And my way of handling it has always been kind of a sense of humor, right? Just kind of laugh along mm -hmm. with them. You know, when they say, Oh, you're, you're going to faint as you walk out of the restaurant because you're not eating the burgers or whatever. I'm like, well, you guys are there to pick me up. I'll trust that you won't leave me in the parking lot. Right. And so I think it is harder for men. Right. It is definitely harder for men just because of the male attitude of I got to eat meat. Right. I got to eat steak and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Yeah. Be strong. <laughs> and I think so. It, it is. There's not as many guys that do this. We all know that the three of us know that. And so I think it does take a, a, an extra strong man to say, I'm still going to do it because I know it's best for me. And ultimately, it's the manliest decision. Absolutely. So, across the board. Yeah. I have a tip for you, though. Look yeah. online for meetup groups that might be having potlucks in your neighborhood. Rip used to have potlucks at mm. his house back in the day before they got entirely too crazy big to have them. <laughs> but look for a potluck in your neighborhood. Look for a local group. Um, whether it is a, um, a Friendsgiving at Thanksgiving time or it's a summer picnic potluck, um, especially if you're near a larger city that does sort of help. But uh, look for those, even if it's a road trip, even if you're going an hour away to go to a, a potluck or something like that from a meetup group, meetup.com is a great place to go look for those kinds of things. And who knows, maybe you'll meet another guy who's out there wandering around in the dark by himself, <laughs> wishing that he had a buddy to hang out with as well. You just never know. Take yeah. that chance, be a little brave and see what's out there. Yeah. There, there, there's a lot of great questions coming in here. Um, and uh, I literally got to run in two minutes, but Amy, let's, let's like give a quick answer for the next two or three. This is Jessica. 
I've been plant-based for 16 years and raising plant-based kids. What do I do about a husband who keeps bringing sodas, candies, and cheese into the house? My kids are 14 and 11. They've never had meat, but they but uh, struggle with the junk that dad brings home. Mm. Change the lock on the doors. <laughs> <laughs> That's really tough. You know, I mean, I there's a couple of different ways you can tackle it. You can have a really deep conversation with your significant other and say, listen, you know, um, l let's see if we can't make a change. I'm not going to change you, but let's see if we can help our kids make better decisions. That's one way. And then the second way is get your kids involved in what you're doing have a plant-based cookbook out. There's a great cookbook from Plant-Based Juniors and also from Drina Burton, who has a kid about plant yeah. or a book about plant-based families. Have your kids get involved in that, whether you are doing some cooking skills together, whether you are flipping through the cookbooks and picking out recipes together, or maybe growing some tomatoes on a, in a pot on your patio, herbs on the windowsill, let the kids pick some fancy fruit at the grocery store, get the kids involved in a way that this becomes something that they want to champion. And those other things will start to look less fun to them. Mm. What about this from Earth Mom? What do I say to my DIL? What does that mean? Daughter-in-law. Okay. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter-in-law, when she pleadingly says, is it okay if I use just a little bit of olive oil on the roasted veggies? I feel so guilty saying no. She's a busy mom of four and I hate being a bother. What do you think? I would say drizzle it on afterwards. If, drizzle it on afterwards. If you want to have olive oil on it, is there any way you could just drizzle it on afterwards? It's the yeah. same thing. You're yeah. just going to drizzle it on afterwards. Have half put aside or put them on different trays. Can you just put yeah. them on Yeah, that's what trays? I was going to say, Amy. I was going to say, hey, can you, can you roast mine without the oil and go ahead and roast everyone else's once you put the oil on it? <laughs> Easy. Yeah. 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 Um, you guys, uh, this has been great. You guys are you guys are wonderful. Everybody, thank you so much for for joining us. I hope that your 2024 is absolutely spectacular. You know, let's kick it off with um, with the Plant Strong way, and uh, I hope that you're all uh, joining us on the seven day challenge to kind of reset uh, as we go into the new year. But you know. These two, John and Amy, they're the absolute best. And I appreciate you guys joining me today on this Facebook Live. Great Thanks to be here, Rip. And just be like you said earlier, change equals opportunity. This is a great opportunity for everybody at the start of a new year. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right. Everybody, have a plan strong weekend. We'll see you soon.